Yes, I am actually finally back to working on the Cape Heart 325 chassis. Since I last left off, few changes. Most notably, it now has a full-size pitcher tube installed. If you recall, this was an alley rescue. Copper thieves had smashed the pitcher tube and swiped the yoke, but luckily left the focus coil behind. Well, totally independently, I went on a little Craigslist expedition and uh, somebody was selling some pitcher tubes and one of them just happened to be a genuine Cape Hart Farnsworth pitcher tube just for this chassis. The 160AR, which are so scarce, there was some talk on the forums that they may not have actually existed, but yes indeed, here is one of them. So, of course, it fits in there perfectly. Now, some other changes are in the high voltage area because that is where I've got trouble. So, set's been recapped, uh, spec resistors changed, yoke replaced, and it seems we're working fine except the high voltage is low. So, uh, I've also been doing some work down in here. I got the cover off and I replaced the capacitor down in here. Couldn't get one of quite the exact original value, which I think was 30 picofarad, and I've got a 33 in here now as a close to high voltage ceramic cap I could find. I've also replaced the high voltage lead. So I'm trying to eliminate all the possible sources of dragging down the high voltage. Well, if those two don't do the trick, I can replace the doorknob high voltage capacitor down in there. If that doesn't do the trick, I've got some solid state high voltage rectifiers. I can replace the 1B3 rectifier with that. If that doesn't do the trick, I actually dug up what I believe is a compatible flyback. But I want to try these one at a time. So first I want to uh, reassemble this, uh, reconnect some things, and try it with that new capacitor and the new high voltage lead with full-size pitcher tube. I still need to do a little bit of work on installing that. Uh, put the support strap right now. It's just kind of rusting in place. Not that secure. I just popped the CRT out. I had installed it initially just to see that it would fit right. And now I want to do a better job of seating it. In particular, I want to replace this crumbling uh, cushioning material. I'm going to replace it with this cloth tape. That's pretty much what this original stuff was anyways. That provides some cushioning between the glass and the metal. And while I've got it out, here is a look of, at the label. Farnsworth 160AR. Which is really just a 16 RP4 or KP4 or as a few other designators. Basically all the first generation 16 inch CRTs are interchangeable. And something else Notable is that there is no external conductive coating on this, but there is this little thing sticking up off the chassis, which seems to indicate to me that this should have an external coating and that that brushes up against it and grounds it to form a filtering capacitor. However, there is the doorknob cap at the base of the high voltage rectifier. Some designs will have a resistor underneath the rectifier socket or sometimes in line on the high voltage cable so you get a capacitor, resistor, and then a capacitor and the CRT itself which forms a Pi filter. This doesn't so it seems to me that all having the, the conductive coating on this is going to do is just be in parallel with that cap and just increase it a bit. So I don't know that it's really all that necessary so what I'm going to do is just throw a sheet of aluminum foil on the bottom and tape it around the edges that'll make contact with that and it'll form a partial capacitor. If I get this thing all working pretty well what I may go back and do is coat it with some slip plate. It's the best thing I found to um, reproduce the original 
conductive graphite coating that this CRT may have had. I say may because I don't see any trace of it left on here. Not all CRTs had it. Some of them just relied on the uh, ceramic high voltage capacitors uh, inside the high voltage cage to do all the filtering. And of course I don't want to cover up that nice label, otherwise you'd never know it was a Farnsworth. So if I do coat this, I'll have to protect that. Now let's see, that label, <laughs> now that I think about it, that label is pretty much right where this is going to be. I have to, I'll have to double check that, which won't be a problem if I use a piece of foil, but hmm. if I really want to spray this coating on there, and I have a feeling that's going to lie right where that label is, I don't want to cover up that label, so... Hmm. Maybe spray the conductive coating, put a piece of aluminum foil over this to kind of bridge it. I don't know. <laughs> First thing though, let's uh, see if I can actually get this to work. After cleaning off all the old dried up remains of the tape, I put on a new fabric tape and wrapped some around the corners of the CRT and installed the strap that's now all secured. I also cleaned up the wiring on this yoke. I had had some long spliced wires in there because I wasn't sure if I was going to go with this, but I think this is the right yoke, so I cleaned up that wiring. And right now, I have installed a new high voltage anode lead, and I'm getting ready to attach it to the cup. So uh, this is the one salvaged from the old anode lead. And here's a new high voltage wire. I threaded it through that same spring and the cup. I cleaned the solder out of uh, this. There's a little hole down the center. I stripped off a bit of this wire and tinned it so you can slide this over. You get that little bit of stripped tinned wire through that hole and I'll fill that up with some solder, make a nice round ball. And then I can slide down this rubber cup over that. And that attaches right down there. And I'm going to clean up a bit of my stuff down in here from when I was working on it. And then I try powering this up. Alright, I've got everything wired back in and I'm ready for a power up test except for one little issue. There's something missing. That I didn't need with a little test CRT, which is something like this. This has an ion trap, meaning the electron gun is bent, and you got to use a magnet to bend it back. The CRT didn't come with one. I've got an assortment of single trap type magnets, single pole magnets. Some use dual, some use single. I do believe this is a single type. I'll have to double check the data sheet. Uh, but not all of these are created equal. Some are different strength. It can also go on one way or the other way. So they will have it black on one side and blue on the other. So I'm just going to have to experiment. Uh, but at any rate, I can turn this on and I can measure that high voltage and see if it's closer to what it should be, even if I can't get a good image on the CRT. So, the next up, power test. Yep, same old problem. Only about 10,000 volts. Well, let's look at the CRT and see what happens. Crooked. I got the magnet really close to the base, so I bet I got it in the wrong, flipped around the wrong way. That's not too bad. Focus. Focus all the way to one extreme. There's a contrast. Right. Try hooking up a signal and try flipping that magnet around. That's definitely promising. 
Uh, so, perhaps the effect of having that uh, conductive coating on the outside uh, did help boost the high voltage. I'll try to measure it uh, with that anode cap in place and see what it is. But also even 10,000 volts with a fresh CRT. Um, it could be good enough. It could be good enough. I was hoping to get closer to 12, but I'll take it if it, if it can produce a decent image. Uh, so I wonder if something left the high voltage drop back down or uh, I don't know what. And it's definitely got some serious blooming, so I think the high voltage, once again, is really way too low. But, I should have it on film, that it was actually okay for a brief while. I'm checking the high voltage with it's still attached to CRT by sticking this between the anode cap and the CRT and yeah, not surprisingly it's back down. So was it ten, about 10,000 volts for a while now it's dropped back down. I've also heard some crackling like when I first turned the set on. So I think there's still an issue somewhere. Could be the high voltage cap underneath the uh, high voltage rectifier. That's certainly a place to start. Of course, you got to take this back apart to get at it. Um, I can also try taking this spring clip off, but I don't really think that's the issue. I'm not sure to take a look under there. I'll, have, uh, I'll turn the set on, turn the lights off, and pay closer attention when I turn the set on. So the high voltage is back up. Don't know why, I just kind of wiggled things around. You can see there's an occasional flash. I think that's just from poor grounding of my temporary aluminum foil capacitor down below. But otherwise, I've found the sweet spot with the um, antrib magnet. Uh, still not crazy about being so close to the base, but hey, it seems to be working. And I adjusted the centering and the linearity and all that, and it's actually working pretty darn well right now. Contrast is a uh, pretty profound impact on the picture, that's what I'm adjusting right now. So it'll get a little bit too light. It must be having a pretty uh, dramatic effect on the gain of the set. Should back off a little bit, you need to lose everything, lose sync, lose the picture. You bring it in sharp, but if you keep going with too much gain, and then it goes bad the other way. So very finicky control. Just right. Alright, so I'm going to start buttoning things down, let the set run longer, and uh, remove the CRT and coat it with the aqua bag. And hopefully uh, this uh, sets in the home stretch.